نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد الحمد لله we are going to observe the month of ramadan which is a blessed month and every muslim tends to wait for this month so we should have a yearning and a sense of connection with the month this year ramadan is going to be very different than previous years for the fact that we are all having the lockdown and we are all almost practically housebound even if you're working during the day you end up staying indoors throughout the evening until the morning now this year with this coronavirus pandemic it is going to be very much unusual especially when we would not see many activities outdoors we would not witness people coming and going the hustle bustle of the marketplace and we will not be able to in most cases observe prayers in the masjid especially tarawih and other prayer in ramadan which we are used to of seeing many more people turning up to so in a way this ramadan is going to be more individualistic more ide- isolated compared to previous ramadans allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forewarned us told us that he will test us so allah says ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim wala nabluwannakum bi shay'in min al khawf wal ju'i wa naqs min al amwal wal anfus wal samarat wa bashir as sabirin alladhina idha asabatuhum musibatun qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahmah wa ulaika humul muhtadun that we will certainly test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth lives and fruits but give glad tidings to those who are patient who when disaster strikes and say indeed we belong to allah and indeed to him we will return those are the ones upon whom are blessings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy and it is those who are the rightly guided ones so inshallah ta'ala we will all persevere and we have been doing it for the last four to six weeks alhamdulillah and we would not uh, give way to despair to feeling completely dejected and remorseful rather we would consider it to be a an opportunity a positive way to change our lifestyle and inshallah ta'ala benefit from the month in many other different ways even if we could not attend the masjid for jama'ah inshallah ta'ala so just a brief review of whatever has been happening as of today we have worldwide 2600000 confirmed cases and this is those people where the tests are being done there are perhaps more than three or four fold people who we did not test in most countries not everyone is tested so we do not know true incidents that may be uh, much more than what we are seeing at the moment so about 2 and a half million people are affected yet this is under estimation and out of those nearly coming to 200000 people have already died with the disease and as you know we have touched upon that before epicenter initially being china and moved on to europe and now it's in america so it's going northward or you can say north westward and this is as of today we have got quite a lot of death as you could see uh usa tops the rank with regards to the deaths 48000 people have died uh, in italy 25000 people have died spain 22000 uk 18000 and 5000 in iran 4500 in china 2000 in canada 600 india 
200 pakistan australia has been doing quite okay with 76 deaths only and saudi arabia is also quite low so if you look at the percentages there's been significant difference anything between one percent to about 13 percent but again the countries that has higher percentage for example italy spain and uk uh, the reason is that they do not test the all their population rather they only test those patients who turn up to a and e those patients who are admitted to hospital or they come to accident and emergency department for their assessment else all the other people they would stay at home they would just be given uh, advice on phone so they've got emergency number they can contact they can contact their gps and uh, uh, on phone they will be just given the advice and uh, they stay at home so we do not test them so that is why we would have higher percentage of death compared to the other countries so it's not actually a true reflection uh, but anyway so anything between one to six percent is the right estimate so about six percent people are dying uh, with this disease initially it was two percent to four percent now it's gone to six percent which is quite significant actually and again this slide i've shown you before uh, in the beginning about four or five weeks ago uh, that people are just going in trajectories the countries are following each other one after the other so italy versus uk we were two weeks behind uh, italy we are still are and likewise pakistan is two weeks behind uk so in uk uh, we are at plateau now we are hopefully coming to the end of our peak and plateauing which means we are leveling now there aren't many more cases there are uh, some sort of stability now the equal number of people getting unwell and similar patients are getting better so we just have a plateau for a couple of weeks and hopefully after that we start going down uh, so pakistan is following uh, uk by two weeks again so we are just being followed up by pakistan so pakistan would be doing the same thing in the next two weeks so two weeks are very crucial and important for people in pakistan so they have done fantastically well uh, in the beginning by closing their schools early on and the marketplaces likewise uh, with the lockdown whatever uh, lockdown there is practically happening is working actually it's quite useful if you look at this slide it would just clarify how italy is now plateauing as well as uh, many other countries uh, pakistan has done quite well from early on you could see because of the closure of a school that black line at the bottom is pakistan which is uh, now there is a concern that if we do not continue with the advice given by the scholars and the government and the medical experts there is a potential for it to go up so as of just two days and in fact yesterday from 22nd of april which was just yesterday we were doing quite well and we were doing actually uh, way better than expected and anticipated but unfortunately in the last about five days or seven days there has been an increment in the number of patients so we should be very careful uh, as to what happens in the next two weeks we don't want this black line to go up we rather want it to continue to be on a flat line like south africa the green line is doing the green line is south africa and next to pakistan so they've been doing quite well they have flattened their curve we did that initially but now we are on the rise again uh, by the looks of it so we have to be very careful so this line should have gone here it's actually going up now again which is a bit of a concern that is why there is a call for revising this strategy trying to make it a bit more robust and uh, hence why i would request all my brothers and sisters in pakistan to take special heed follow the guidelines keep the distance in masjid even if you're coming for tarawi if you're above the age of 50 you should not come to the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you would be rewarded more when you pray at home because you are following the command of the ulama of pakistan and the government they are ulul amr and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ati'ullah wa ati'ur rasul wa ulil amr minkum follow allah and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those who are in charge of your affairs and these are ulama and these are the 
hukam, the the leaders, the uh, political leaders or the head of states. So if the government officials are telling you to stick to this plan and ulama are supporting them, we must stick with the plan. That is what we are supposed to do. Don't think that you would be better off going to the masjid because uh, you think that you are following a way of hardship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, it is not. It is not azima. It is going against the authority, going against the command of Allah and Quran. So we can't do that. It is not just not permissible. People are not supposed to do it. We have to stick to the guideline given by the ulama of Pakistan and they have done it unanimously. All the ulama from different backgrounds have gathered together and they have given this strict information and instruction that you should stay at home if you are above the age of 50 and likewise those who have any illness, any symptoms, they cannot hide it. You'll be lying. You'll be causing more trouble to yourself. And it's not just about yourself. It's about others as well. So when you are going to the masjid, you're actually causing many others to be affected by you. So you are actually causing more harm. So going against the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la darara wa la dirar, so you're causing harm to others. It's not at all permissible. So make sure that we stick to the guideline. Obviously, if guideline changes and they allow you to go to the masjid and without having any difference, any distance, any gaps, any washing your hand, do whatever they say. But you have to stick to the government officials in conjunction with the ulama. So I've emphasized that enough. I'm hopeful that, inshallah ta'ala, we would do our best and inshallah ta'ala stick to the plan and would get a lot of benefits anyway. So we just move on to what is it We've covered all that before. Let's just go straight on to uh, the Ramadan bit. So Ramadan is just inshallah ta'ala starting in uh, most countries tonight or tomorrow. How do we welcome Ramadan? Uh, obviously we know this is the ninth month and fasting in this month is a, uh, an uh, obligation for all the Muslims and we want to do it in order to attain piety, taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, this fasting has been made obligatory for you as it was made obligatory for those before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may achieve and attain piety, God consciousness. And to simplify piety, it means following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refraining from all the prohibitions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a spiritual journey and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would actually welcome Ramadan by observing the moon, sighting the moon for two to three months before Ramadan. So from the month of Rajab, he would go out of his way to find out where the moon is and when the moon would be in order to decipher how soon the Ramadan would be. Because in lunar calendar, the days of a month is either 29 or 30. They do two consecutive 29 or two consecutive 30. There's hardly ever a possibility of having third 29 or third 30 days month. So normally it would just be interposed between two 29 and a 30 or two 30 and a 29 or 129 month and second 30 months. So this is how it goes. So that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would look for three months just to have some idea. It's only a matter of one day here and there, but he was so, you know, keen to find out. So we should be having the same feeling about Ramadan. And now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout the year would want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had no concern. Mali walid dunya, what do I have to do? I have nothing to do with this dunya, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say. But when it comes to Rajab, he would make this dua, which all, although some scholars would consider to be slightly weak narration, yet there is this uh, consensus, or you could say the wide majority of ulama would consider it to be uh, acceptable. Uh, the hadith is acceptable, inshallah ta'ala, because of the difference of opinion among the muhaddithun on it. Uh, authenticity. But anyway, it means, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would make this dua, Oh Allah, have barakah, give us blessing in our Rajab and in our Sha'ban and make us reach the month of Ramadan. So he would want to then benefit from the month of Ramadan. Such is the blessing of the month of Ramadan. So we should always have this feel, inshallah ta'ala. And we 
attain a lot of spiritual heights when we can do that and we should do that we can achieve piety taqwa following the command this staying away from disobedience of Allah having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having patience when we are hungry we, we try to uh, stick with the, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we cannot eat until sun has set likewise having zuhud living in a very little meager amount inshallah ta'ala have generosity we want to jo- donate more as we do alhamdulillah and then there are degrees of taqwa that piety that you do you uh, refrain from how much can you refrain? How much can you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imam Ibn Juzay al-Kalbi Ibn Juzay al-Kalbi rahmatullah alayhi in his tafsir of Quran in his tafsir of uh, Holy Quran he has given five degrees of taqwa the first one is Islam al-Islam the submission which is accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be your lawgiver following their way have faith in Allah, have faith in all the articles of faith. So believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then complete submission with the heart that we would obey Allah and we accept that that Allah has the higher authority. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would guide us and we would just follow it. So this is what we all have, alhamdulillah, as believers. We are all at the station of Islam, alhamdulillah. So the next step or next station is the station of Tawbah. That is what we all need to strive for. It is an obligation for every Muslim who has become Muslim to attain this level, this degree of taqwa, which is to refrain from sins, staying away from sins. And if one accidentally or unwittingly, unwillingly, unknowingly, involuntarily end up committing a sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he must repent straight away. He must try and do a complete U-turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is like you have taken a wrong exit from the motorway. You take your way back. You take another way to come back onto the track. You do not continue to wander around in that wrong exit. You do not enjoy that. You actually feel very distressed and then try to come back to the main track because every second or minute that you are wasting in that track you are going away from your journey in time so your time was that you wanted to be there at four o'clock you would be delayed for that so no one wants to do that same is the, the taqwa and the tawbah sorry the station of tawbah is that we repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come back to the track and tawbatan means to turn back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what we all need to do if you make a mistake we would repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala otherwise we would try to not make any mistake at all then the third level is the level of wara which is scrupulousness scrupulousness means that we even stay away not from just haram which is the tawbah but rather stay away from the doubtful matters as well the things which are not clear-cut some scholars say it's haram some say it's okay but there's you know a doubt about that we would go by the safe option safer of the two opinions or if there was the possibility of something being halal and haram i would just go by the safest position and stay away from that this is called the station of wara we should all try to achieve that as well that's the level inshallah ta'ala at the end of ramadan we should be aiming up for and there are two more stations which are quite high stations but one might want to just at least know about them and hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day give us this abstinence which is zuhud that we stay away from things which are halal which are mubah which are jaiz which are permissible yet in doing so we might be wasting our time we might be dwelling too much in this dunya we might be getting ourselves interested and involved and engrossed in this material world rather than that i would just be connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i would not waste my time in material world this is zuhud this is to do with very little renunciation we should try and stay away from dunya as much as possible and only use dunya as we use our toilet Whenever there's a need, you go to the toilet, but you do not enjoy that. You do not stay there for longer than needed. This is how it should be. So that is zuhud, 
and finally the station of mushahada witnessing which is that you stay away from everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that has whatever even if the halal stuff you would just try to stay away from everything that would take your intentions your ideas your thoughts your feeling away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you just be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you always think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything obviously that is for the prophets and for the siddiqoon so but at least we can try to aim in this Ramadan for second and third level so we all have to do second level which is tawbah but the third level is something which you try and uh, you know, practice in, in Ramadan may Allah give us tawfiq for that now obviously we are going to purify our souls ourselves from many sins and those are the sins I'm just going to highlight to you so that we can think about them are we working towards that so ostentation which is riya showing off fast is beautiful remedy for that when you fast you cannot show off people do not know just by looking at you that you are fasting and alhamdulillah everyone else fasts anyway so there's nothing to show off so you do not feel uh, any you know uh, any riya type of sense that I'm uh, I'm better than someone. I, I'm showing my fasting. Everyone is fasting, mashallah. And likewise, heedlessness, ghafla. This is another uh, problem which uh, makes us sin. And uh, the opposite of that is dhikr, remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more we remember Allah, the more we would stay away from uh, the ghafla. And hence, we would not commit sin because we know Allah is ever watchful. Allah is looking at us. Allah is observing us. So we should try and away, uh, stay away from all the sins, the ghafla the heedlessness uh, th- that's a quite big disease of the heart which causes more people to commit sin uh, likewise in uh, the laziness we become very weak and lazy and lax but ramadan makes you completely opposite doesn't let you sleep too much doesn't let you eat too much so you get to do a lot more activities alhamdulillah so the laziness gets out of the way shahwa the lust makes us do a lot of sins but alhamdulillah when you fast after a day or so two three four days the the weakness in the in the nafs ammara uh, is such that it makes you not feel too much craving for dunya for lustful gaze lustful uh, actions alhamdulillah you cut down on your halal stuff which is your food your conjugal relationship your drink and you cut down on your sleep so everything becomes taqlil means means lessened so you do taqlil al-manam for example taqlil al-ta'am taqlil al-ikhtilat ma'al anam so all those actions help you uh, you know breaking the lust and likewise stinginess so we tend to feed other people we tend to do a lot more so you, most people pay their zakat in ramadan sadaqatul fitr some extra charity inshallah ta'ala, through that we get rid of bukhl the stinginess likewise miserliness obviously when you uh, give others you do not crave for that money that much because you leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you in Jannah and likewise ghadab, anger you, the hadith says when you are in altercation and discussion with someone and someone try to, tries to speak to you in, in a harsh way and try to fight with you you just say please don't do that I'm fasting and I Fine, so I'm fasting, so don't do that. And likewise, arrogance, you become weak and you could realize your weakness, how weak you get when you haven't eaten for you know a few hours. So it, it, it takes our arrogance away, alhamdulillah. So we shouldn't feel big about ourselves. I'm very strong. No, actually, we're quite weak and we're always in need of help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are the diseases we try and purify our souls from. So we, when we are coming to the beginning of Ramadan which is actually in few hours time for most people or next day which is tomorrow in certain countries inshallah ta'ala as well so we need to think about how am I what state am I in alhamdulillah in the last four or five weeks that we've been in lockdown we must have already attained and achieved some sort of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through regular uh, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some Quranic recitation more discussion more listening to talk more concern about our dunya and hence the neediness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings uh, so what state am I in spiritually physically am I really ready to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan to spend my Ramadan in the best possible way is my earning halal or am I making some you know haram incomes as well so we need to be careful I have my prayed I have my prayers 
uh, got better. Am I praying for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with utmost khushu? I need to work on that and improve that inshallah in Ramadan. And uh, what do I do? How do I improve my situation? What activities do I have to do? How am I connected to the righteous people? What sort of zikr do I do? What sins am I involved in? Do I need to get rid of those? Do I need to repent? Am I breaking ties of relationship? Am I being bad with my parents towards my neighbors, towards my uh, family and and friends? So I need to mend those, uh, you know, uh, breakages in the in the relationship. And uh, any minor sin that I'm doing on a habitual level, uh, almost every day. So I need to get rid of all of those. And then sincerely repent once we know. We spend some time in seclusion at night time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala crying. If you can't cry, at least make your face as if you are about to cry. You can actually act out crying. That hadith says, hadith has some weakness, but it has a good meaning that if you, you try to cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you can't, then at least make yourself look like as if you are about to cry or you are crying. So imitate or pretend crying. And then two rak'at with sincerity and then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Weep, repent inshallah ta'ala for all the sins that you have committed. And inshallah ta'ala you have the determination for never committing the same sin again. Through that you would be able to uh, come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll be purifying yourself. And when you enter Ramadan in that state, there's a lot more blessings to be had and if there's any right of individual, individuals, a human being, a people, family, or friends that you have violated in the form of uh, their money or their you know, right of any other sort, you've bitten someone, then go and ask for forgiveness, uh, compensate for that, pay back whatever is due, and then, uh, then have concern for the Ramadan, wait for Ramadan, think about Ramadan, Try to check the moon sighting straight at the Maghrib time. Look for the moon as a sunnah. Read the dua, which is sunnah to read. Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil yumni wal iman. Wa salamati wal islam. Wa tawfiq lima tuhibu wa tarda. Rabbi wa rabbu kulla. You know, words to the effect. Similar dua. Just read those duas, inshallah ta'ala. Set some goals. What are you going to do in the Ramadan? Plan ahead. Attend some courses, some talks, arrange some family gatherings, read something together, and then read Quran regularly. And then uh, free yourself from unnecessary engagements. You've got plenty of time anyway. If you've got some assignments to do, some shopping to do before, you just do it now. And uh, start doing jama'ah at home. Obviously, in the current environment, you might not be able to go out. But at least have regular adhan for all the prayer. And then sunnah and then iqama and then get your family if you're on your own as a male member of the family get your wife your children staying behind you and then let them all join you in prayer inshallah ta'ala and then uh, make sure that you could do uh, with some annual leave if you're still working and going out take some days off especially the fridays the last 10 days and then spend that time in uh, you know all the acts of devotion to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Try to do some etikaf. Obviously, you might be able to uh, not do in the masjid this year, but uh, do that at home. Spend some time on your own anaflita etikaf between Asar and Maghrib, between Isha and Tahajjud. You know, any time that you could spend, a few hours, one hour, two hours, and then do your ibadat without your phone present next to you, without anyone else from the family disturbing you. And if you just see this scheme that you can follow if you wanted to, so you wake up for suhoor, no matter how tired you are, there is a barakah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, you know, have your suhri done, your suhoor done, because pre-dawn meal has barakah, in the suhoori barakah, and then do your azkar, tasbihat, do all your prayer on time, as I said with jama'ah, do not miss out on sunnah mu'akkada, which is 12 rakat in the day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever reads 12 extra rakat after the fard prayer, which is two of fajr, Four of Zuhr before and two after. So six of Zuhr. And two after Maghrib, three fard. And two after Isha. So twelve rakat, whoever does that, a palace will be built for him in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. So in Ramadan, you get the reward of fard for performing any sunnah act. 
and 70 times over the reward of fard if you've done one fard in Ramadan. So there's a lot of opportunities to to gain the maximum reward and benefit from. And uh, try to do your, you know, reach some tafsir of Quran, some understanding, Marif al-Quran, Bayan al-Quran, Anwar al-Bayan. There are many tafsir in Urdu and English available. Taqis Mani Sahib, Ahmad Barakatum has translated into English and Urdu as well. Just read a, a, a portion of Quran with translation. Recite a juz on a daily basis. Set a time. Set a certain amount of uh, uh, recitation for a day. Ideally, every Muslim should try and complete one juz minimum a year. Uh, uh, in Ramadan and those who could do more inshallah ta'ala should do more so 5, 10 people are mashallah completing about 12 and 15 ajza in Ramadan so that, that, that's fantastic so decide how many you want to do in Ramadan and then read it on a daily basis make it a must that you have to complete that much inshallah ta'ala and practice one new sunnah on a daily basis do some act of charity with some money and also with your smiley face towards your family, especially to your parents. If you can't see them, at least have a FaceTime or you know video conference or telephone consultation, some sort of discussion on phone. Find out how they are helping them out, and stay away from all the sins. As I said, Duru Sharif upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, istighfar, special dua. and some good deed that you do just with Allah subhanahu wa taala, morning and evening. Uh, azkar, tarawi. So the tarawi is, has to be given a very special emphasis this year. You're not going to do that in masjid, so do at home. Everyone should be able to lead tarawi in the homes if they have a, a son who is post pubertal and has memorized some Quran, he could lead the tarawi inshallah ta'ala, even if he hasn't got the beard yet. If he doesn't shave, ideally he shouldn't be shaving. Let him be just lead the tarawi. You do the fard and he leads the tarawi, be good. And if he has got good recitation, he can even lead your fard prayer as well, provided that he is pubertal, he is balir. Uh, and likewise, if you have just uh, only women in the family, men has to re- lead the prayer, uh, tarawi and others. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, men is the one who should call out adhan and iqama, not the women. And you can stand, even if there's one woman, your wife or your mother, they should be standing behind, not right to you has happened with men. So men to men, if the two men or a young boy, man stands on the left side as Imam and the second person stands on the right side uh, as a Muqtadi. But the woman, even one woman, should be standing behind, not next to the men. And then uh, read all the du'as which are uh, you know, highly encouraged, Surah Kahaf, and stay in the state of wudu. And uh, these are easy bits. Tahajjud, for example, in Ramadan is extremely easy. Just wake up for your suhoor, 5-10 minutes extra while food is being prepared. Just do your wudu, do your 2 rakat, 4 rakat of tahajjud. Even if it's simple with qulhu allahu adinna atayna, but do it. And then ishraq prayer, easy to do in Ramadan. Awabin you could do. And try to uh, use dates and water to fulfill the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And another easy deed in Ramadan is to just pay a small amount on a daily basis. And those 30 days or 29 days that you would do that charity, you would catch Laylatul Qadr. And one pound, one rupee, or five rupees on that night would inshallah ta'ala be equal to the reward of 83 years or so. Because it's better than a thousand months as per Quran. So just do that on a daily basis. And learn some du'as. You know, one of the important du'as is ذَهَبَ الظَّمَأُ وَبْتَلَّتِ الْعُرُوقُ وَثَبَتَ الْأَجْرُ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ Which is after you've uh, had your uh, drink in Ramadan, after you break your fast. So remember that, memorize it and read it. And uh, help out the family. Uh, do extra tasbihat and durood as I said. And have the intention of qaylula uh, in the afternoon. Use miswak. Keep your miswak with you. Use it, mashallah. And oil, perfume, all with the intention of sunnah. And uh, with regards to the COVID pandemic, we should try to drink extra fluid from Maghrib to Suhoor, which is Sahari time. We should try and do about three liters of water, unless you have heart condition and doctors advise you otherwise, 
generally re, le, uh, drink about three liters of water. So if you just do half glass every two rakat of tarawih, then that would be quite good. Uh, that would be about two and a half liters anyway. Rest you could do before and after. At the beginning of your uh, iftar, you could do one glass. And then end of iftar, another glass. So in, uh, in, in sahri, you could do two glasses. So rest you could do between your, you know, uh, breaks of tarawih inshallah ta'ala so make sure that we have about good three and a three and a half liters of water and uh, not all in one go if you have had two three glasses together you would get your kidneys get rid of it very quickly you would need to go to the toilet pee it all out which is not what we need we need a consistent small amount of fluid regularly for the next four five six seven eight hours and from sunset which in UK is going to be about quarter past eight, eight-ish to 3.30 to, you know, whatever time, depending on 15 or 18 degrees. So maybe if you're doing 18 degrees, even then you've got about four hours plus three, seven hours. So that's good seven hours that you can, uh, you know, eat and drink, inshallah ta'ala. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So keep it spaced apart, but have about three, three and a half liters of water. Uh, some extra tea obviously one or two cups of tea would be good and uh, as I said take some extra time off to sleep in the afternoon if you could afford don't keep sleeping first thing in the morning until 11 o'clock and then you can't sleep obviously but that's not the way give yourself some respite in the afternoon just to keep you going for your taraweeh with all the intention inshallah ta'ala, to get ready for your uh, taraweeh inshallah ta'ala and try unnecessary work and oily stuff and greasy stuff in uh, in iftar is not advisable at all and uh, obviously keep a quick check with your doctors find out what medication you have to take and how can you space them apart and inshallah ta'ala that will be good and uh, do not go on you know channels and youtubes and facebooks just to waste time and to listen to all that news about this and that and this theory and that conspiracy theory and this is happening and that is happening people just dwell, dwell too much on these and waste their time this is what shaitan wants us to do don't do that just stay connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to the good talks from shiuk akabirin ulama and uh, special askar you have to complete quran minimum one and you could do if you're not half it then about 10 completions inshallah ta'ala one to ten completions in Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. And about 100 to 300, La ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, as'aluka al-jannah wa a'uzu bika min al-nar. La ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, as'aluka al-jannah wa a'uzu bika min al-nar. There's no deity other than you, O oh Allah, other than Allah. I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask you, O oh Allah, your jannah, and I seek refuge from hellfire. So beautiful dua, make sure that we do it. And likewise, 100 to 300 times, husband Allah who ni'mal wakil for this pandemic. Oh Allah, we trust in you. There's no one um, better than you to be our, uh, you know, supporter, our savior, our, you know, helper. And likewise, ayat kareem, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum min al-zalimin. One can do 313 times, as uh, advised by Mufti Taqif Marisa Abdamad Barakatuhu. But you can do about 100 times, 300 times, however many you want to do. You don't have to have a specific number. But the reason we suggest these numbers is so that you can do a certain amount. Otherwise, it feels that I've done enough. Without counting, it feels that you have done enough. And many a time, shaitan makes you feel that and you haven't done that many anyway. So keep giving yourself for a spiritual upliftment and benefit uh, a number. And that would help. Don't consider that to be a must, but do it as a practice, as we do with our physical exercise that many time you know push-ups that many time dumbbells and you do it in order to maintain your spirit uh, physical uh, shape or muscles so for the spiritual uh, building of our muscles we do the same similar amount of numbers some number which you which you do on a daily basis and that would be quite useful Third kalima we call subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar and every so often wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim so about 300 times so those are the askar and many other askars obviously there are books available do those and connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Duru Sharif try to increase it especially on Friday definitely about a thousand times on Friday you don't have to do the big one if you don't have time for that at least do you know the small one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي صلى الله على النبي الأمي and any small درود will do إن شاء الله تعالى but do it three uh, hundred times minimum to a thousand times إن شاء الله تعالى so I hope that would help uh, with regards to our uh, whole day plan for Ramadan with regards to Tarawi I finally want to just say this make sure that you as head of the household lead Tarawi if you are leading it unless you have someone in the family or friend who is half is and oh he has got some memorization he could do that uh, his tajweed is better or your son is memorizing so inshallah let him lead if he's baligh but if you are leading it make sure that you every day have some new portion of quran three ayat just memorize three ayat for that day spend half an hour 15 20 minutes three ayat and one rakat inshallah dedicate that so first rakat of every two rakat or first rakat of every four rakat just read that portion three ayat four ayat half a juice half a, half a page sorry or however much you could do so on a daily basis hopefully by the end of the month you would have memorized three four rukus you might have memorized whole surah yasin or you might have just done Surah Mulk, Surah Ar-Rahman. There are many surahs that you can pick uh, depending on your uh, ability and the time that you have. Just select a surah, take a portion of that, memorize it 20, 30, 50, 100 times and read it in all the prayers throughout the day and in Taraweeh as well. Every first rakat of two units, do with that surah. So you would have done that about 10 times and other surahs could go in the second one and that how that is how you would be able to memorize it better inshallah ta'ala so take this amazing opportunity to increase your uh, memorization the hips that you have done and uh, perhaps you might never get the chance to lead taraweeh unless you are half ill so this is your golden opportunity take heed from this take this advantage inshallah ta'ala and when you lead people in Taraweeh with the bit of Quran, with the part of Quran and portion of Quran that you have not memorized properly before, you're just doing it and then you have to think about that your prayer becomes so beautiful because you cannot think of anything else other than the part that you've just memorized and you're paying attention to it because you do not want to make any mistake and that helps a lot, that helps with your uh, concentration in the prayer May Allah give us tawfiq, inshallah ta'ala that will be quite beneficial and I suggest that we should all make dua for each other you make dua for us and we will make dua for you may Allah make it easy for everyone subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh